Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Bias, yours truly, from chichichecket.com, back with another Tutorial Tuesday. Okay, so maybe it's not Tuesday by the time you're watching this, because I'm kind of recording it on Tuesday, and I don't know, I kind of doubt it'll be up by today, but whatever, close enough, it's Tutorial Tuesday, deal with it. <laughs> okay, so the effect that we're going over is this little guy right here. So let's just get a better look at this. Uh, all right. All right, so what you're looking at is something that's called an HDR photo. And an HDR photo is, for lack of better words, just a photo that's created by combining several different images that have different levels of exposure. And normally HDR is used for a totally different purpose than this, but you can actually create some pretty cool effects by using HDR. So I figured I might as well do a quick tutorial to show you the kind of rundown that you can go through to create some pretty cool effects by using HDR. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. So, what you're going to need is several different pictures. I would recommend at least three. So, the ones that I'm using are a picture of Eli. And so, I started off with uh, a picture that was a tad too dark. And then I took another one that was about, well, okay. So, it was about right on the money in terms of uh, exposure. It's not too bright, not too dark. And then the third one was just a little bit too bright. And so, in order to do something like this, you are going to need a camera that allows you to change the uh, amount of exposure on it. And by exposure, I mean the overall brightness. And you can mess with the exposure with uh, shutter speed or aperture and ISO and all that fun stuff. So, you kind of need one of those uh, really fancy cameras in order to do that. Um, the, the camera that we have is called a Canon T2i, and it served us pretty well for pretty much everything that we do. So... If you have a camera that, uh, that can do something like that, you're pretty much set. Alright, so getting into the HDR stuff is uh, actually pretty simple. We're just going to go over here to File, go down to Automates, and we're going to go to Merge to HDR Pro. And so you're just going to get this little menu right here, and we're going to use the files, and we'll go Browse, and we'll just uh, click and drag and select the three uh, different levels of exposure for the different images there, and we'll hit OK. And so you see that we've got these images right here. And we'll just go ahead and hit OK. And after a little bit of crunching, it's going to go ahead and bring this up in its own little uh, window thing. But these are kind of large images, so it's taking its sweet time. And there we go. Okay, so right off the bat, it obviously looks a little strange, but that's kind of normal from my experience, so don't really worry about it. We'll just get right into the messing with the settings and all that. So over here, you see we've got lots of settings to work with. And of course, they all do particular things, so you're just going to have to mess with them on your own, just kind of see what it is that you like in the particular photo that you're working with, because obviously different photos can create different effects, and so you need different settings and all that. But something that I like to do in this particular photo is I like to put down the saturation, just so that way it's uh, not so red, and then maybe put up the vibrance just a little bit. So that way it's not quite so red, but still have a little bit of color in it. Maybe tweak those settings a little bit. And then, let's see, what else should we do? Let's go ahead and go over to the detail next. So now with the detail, you can either decrease it to give it kind of like a cartoony look. So you see that it looks really smoothed over and all that. Or if you want to get a really sharp image, just kind of amp this up. And it'll start really bringing out those details. But that looks kind of gross. So let's make this look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and go to the edge glow and start messing with the radius and the strength. So you can see by amping up the radius and the strength, we get kind of like a glow going on, which is kind of that classic HDR look that you get with, um, what is it, with Dave Hill effect? Yeah, so this is probably how Dave Hill made his pictures, kind of with like an HDR look. So anyway, just go ahead and mess with uh, settings like that. So let's kind of see if we can give it a little bit more of a glow to it. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now, over here, it's a little too blown out, so I'm going to see if I can bring down some of those uh, some of those highlights. So let's just go ahead and put down the exposure a little bit just to start getting rid of some of those highlights. But then again, I'm making this a little too dark than I like, so maybe I can put up the gamma a little bit. Or, yeah, move the gamma to the left to kind of brighten it back up a little bit. And yeah, I would say that's looking pretty good. Obviously, I would spend a lot more time on this if I wanted to make a really cool effect. So now let's go over to the shadows and the highlights. Now for the shadows, I really like my shadows dark, so I'll put that down a little bit. 
And so that'll darken up the, the shadows and the sunglasses and in the fold of the shirt and things of that sort. As for the highlights, I think there's a little too much, so I don't really feel like amping those up, but I'll see what happens when I put them down. Okay, so maybe putting down the highlights kind of chopped up uh, the highlights that were going on around the bits of the hair. So I kind of like how that's looking. Now what I'll go ahead and do is go over to the curves on the right hand side. Something that I like to do is just to uh, make a point somewhere in the middle and just kind of drag it down to the right. And that'll just kind of darken the overall look. But now I made this little area a little too dark. So maybe I'll go ahead and bring back some of the highlights. And maybe mess with the gamma a little bit. Maybe not so much on the exposure there. And we got something that's looking pretty good. It's a little blown out in places, but hey, it looks cool, so who cares? So once you've got something that looks pretty cool, all you have to do is go to the bottom right-hand corner and click OK. All right, so there you go. With just a couple adjustments of some sliders and just kind of messing with the overall look of it, you can create a pretty cool effect just from something that looked something like this. I mean, that was the original, and now you got something that looks like this. Pretty cool, huh? But of course, you never have to stop there. You can always add a little bit on top of it. So let's say, let's open up some of these, uh, these things over here. So maybe let's add maybe an organic look to it. And let's uh, let's go ahead and put this down to about 50%. And then maybe add a, let's see, a black and white layer on top of that. Set that to overlay. And maybe put that down about 75%. So those two things right there really made it a little more unique. And overall, a little cooler to look at. I mean, come on. That's, that's kind of cool looking. It's kind of movie looking, isn't it? But then, of course, you don't even have to stop with coloring and all that. You can always mess with the, the cropping and all that. So let's go ahead and merge this all into one layer by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, E. Since we're on a PC, that would be Command, Option, Shift, E if you're on a Mac. And let's just go ahead and make a new document. I'm going to stick with a 4K preset, which is 4096 by 2160. And we'll hit OK. And let's just go ahead and drag this guy up and down in here. And now you'll see that when you uh, try and put this into a new document, you'll get this little thing that says the target document has a different depth than the source document. This may result in lower than expected quality. And all that's talking about is that the HDR image that you created is made into a 16-bit image. And when you make a new document, it's normally an 8-bit. So it's just saying, hey, there's a little bit of a conflict there. Is that okay with you? And yeah, that's okay. We made this with 8-bit images anyway, so who really cares? So now you can just kind of position this in a way that looks really cool. Maybe go and add a vignette. Let's go ahead and add one of my custom ones in there. And there you go. So let's take a look at this bad boy. All right, so there you go. That was just a really quick rundown of messing with the settings with HDR photos and showing you just how you can get kind of a cool look from them. So yeah, that's about it for this uh, tutorial here. I really hope you found it interesting and maybe piqued your interest in HDR photos. If you have any questions on this, please don't hesitate to ask. I will go ahead and you know answer as many questions as possible. And as usual, if you are interested in you know following us on Facebook, we have a Facebook page you can uh, like and you know follow us on and all that. We even have Twitter and all that good stuff. But yeah, I think I'm just kind of wasting your time talking your off. So I'll just go ahead and call it a day and get to editing and all that fun stuff. So I will see you guys later, and you enjoy your week. Peace out, guys.